What's up, everyone? We are back on the showroom floor at SIGGRAPH 2018, the Maxon booth. We're here with Russ Gautier. He's the art director at Perception. Just presented a little bit ago. How'd it go? Yeah, indeed. It was great. Thanks to me. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's fantastic. So uh, what was your pre presentation over? I watched it, but for those who couldn't watch it, what was it over? Of course. So uh, we used Cinema 4D uh, a whole bunch for the movie Black Panther. We, uh, at Perception, we have uh, sort of two primary focuses. We work uh, on feature films doing uh, sort of technological development, uh, FUI, which is like futuristic user interface, like holograms and screens and all kinds of stuff. We do uh, title sequences, um, and we do just sort of general design and, and consulting uh, Marvel Studios is sort of our, our primary client. We do a lot of work with them. Um, and then on the other side of things, we do a lot of uh, the same kind of things, but for big tech companies. So like IBM and uh, SpaceX and Samsung and all kinds of stuff. And these things kind of all feed into each other because, you know, all those big tech companies, they, they all go watch Marvel movies. And the Marvel <laughs> movies, you know, those guys, we, we bring like a... Uh, uh, sort of real-world uh, inspiration to some of our more fantastical technologies that we do for Marvel Studios. So it's sort of this uh, this big cyclical influence. So that's that's in a nutshell what we do at Perception. Yeah, that's pretty funny that you mentioned that because it's like, okay, so I have to make a uh, a FUI, a futuristic user interface, but I have to make it actually seem like it would be realistic, like it works, you know, in a real-world environment. Exactly. So. So FUI really is uh, uh, just a, a way of helping directors tell a story, right? So it's we've got a, a problem that we can solve visually rather than you know spend a whole bunch of time doing exposition. We can solve the problem with uh, with an interface. You know, like that, yeah. it's a it's a great way of sort of uh, uh, showing the story, not necessarily uh, saying the story, right? It like just becomes a little bit more interesting visually. But then it also becomes an opportunity to. Uh, to highlight some kind of interesting idea or technology rather than making something that just feels like magic. Uh, you know, bringing like a real world influence really helps it feel believable. It helps it feel like it belongs in the world, it belongs in the story, and it's not just magical stuff on the screen, you know? As someone in, in that field, in the fooey stuff, you ever watching TV and you're like, ah, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but I will say, like one of my favorite examples of a really well executed FUI is: uh, Did you guys see uh, Westworld? Yes. The first season of Westworld. Yes. There was a moment where, like, she's talking, and you're seeing like the sort of decision tree of things that she. Oh could yeah, see. yeah, yeah. It was like in the the operating room and stuff like yes. that. Yeah, and she like kind of like freaks out and stuff. Oh, that was so good. Unbelievable, and that to me is such a fantastic execution of FUI uh, and what FUI can do for a story, for development, like it shows so many layers of, uh, of what's going on underneath uh, in these machines' minds without having to like go into a whole bunch of exposition about it, like you just show it in a simple, clean visual and it's, it's beautiful. So uh, this is something. Um, how much how much actual R and D do you guys put into some of this stuff? Like you showed off the 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 sand that you guys did in Black Panther, yep. and like kind of like how you guys created it. And it's very cool because like uh, uh, the way you did it. Like when you were saying sand, I was like, okay, sand on the ground. We're gonna make a beach scene. We're gonna make something pretty, you know, on the beach, you know. But no, you actually took a character, you took a Velociraptor, and you made it look like it was made out of sand, you know, like. Like, and then the, the, the way you did it, it's like, oh, you can knock it out. If you weren't explaining it, you could probably do it in five minutes, yep. you know? Yep. So how much R&D is there involved before you can get to that point where it's like, oh, let's pull this off in five minutes? So uh, that's, a, that's a fantastic question. And it, generally, it sort of depends on the problem we're trying to solve. For the sand thing, we knew going into it that there were going to be uh, a few hangups. We've done this. We've done this a few times before. We knew stereo is going to be a thing. We knew that they're going to come back with comments and everything. Uh, so we need to be very, very flexible. So right from the beginning, developing something that was uh, flexible and scalable and uh, repeatable was was sort of a, a major primary task of ours. So we, you know, we we started with. Uh, you know, cloning objects and all kinds of stuff because we're thinking sand, like, all right, well, we need like little tiny particles and, and whatnot. Like, I was wondering why you guys just didn't yeah. do like the uh, the uh, uh, Pixar Piper thing where it's basically just a big freaking scatter, yeah, you know? Exactly. So so we, we had sort of started with that. Uh, it felt like a very intuitive place to start. 
Um, but very quickly realized, like, all right, well, this is going to take forever, uh, you know, and it's it doesn't make any sense for for a model that's static, you know, essentially a statue. Uh, we don't need a billion particles to make that thing look like it's made of sand. Like, there's got to be a shader-based solution to this. So we tried a whole bunch of different things with, like, displacing, uh, you know, the individual polygons and playing with fong fall-off and everything. Um, and ultimately landed on this sort of solution that, that allowed us to add this sort of sandy element, this sort of dynamic lighting element in After Effects, uh, rather than having to render it out in, in 3D every right. single time, right? right? Um, just made it a lot, a lot more flexible for us on the back end of things. Um, but in terms of time spent, it really depends on the project. So for this one, we we spent a long time working in sand because we'd been doing a lot of technological development prior to you know getting the main on end title sequence. We'd done a ton of sand stuff before that because we were developing all of this technology, some of these you know um, uh, sort of almost pre viz level like references for all of these other studios uh, to, to build this technology. So we'd been playing with sand for quite a while. Um, in terms of actual R&D time, we probably spent a good two or three weeks before really sinking our teeth into shot production, just doing setup and development and getting things ready to go. Uh, we had a huge wall in our office that was you know, blocking out every single title card what was going to happen, how the transitions were going to work, um, and then uh, into actual like sand development for, for the shot production. I got to say, uh, so watching it, you're just like, you know, there's this big render wars going on, of course, you know, you're just working in standard renderer and it looked very pretty. Yes. And so while, while people are watching these presentations, you know, it's one reason I love being here and watching them is because you get to see how people work and you did something that I thought was very, very interesting, right? So anytime you would bring a shader, you would always change the seed. Yes, yeah. oh, absolutely. So it's one of those things that, uh, that I got in the habit of doing just, just to make sure that the random seed is different for every single one of those things. Just so you don't end up with, with any kind of potential overlap or anything that feels too pre-planned. You want it to feel really organic and natural, and that random seed value is is kind of what helps you get there. Yeah, and I've I've always I've always said so when you're watching a show or like a YouTube clip or something like that, and they use the default Premiere Pro uh, 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 like uh, font yeah. or a Final Cut Pro font, you're like amateurs, yeah. right? Yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. little Obviously, bit of the that. <laughs> it's 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 like the little bit of details. Like don't use the just seed that comes with it, you know, change it up, yeah. make sure, add it a little bit different, and that adds so much more to it. It does, it really does. Uh, adding that little bit of, a uh, little bit of randomness, a little bit of change, uh, can really go a long way for your end product, absolutely. Awesome. Where can people find you online? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at robotastronaut underscore on Twitter. Follow Perception, which is uh, at exp underscore perception. And then uh, our website is experienceperception.com. And they can find the, uh, the video that kind of is based off of your? Absolutely. We have a, we have a monster case study up there uh, with every single element of the Wakandan technology that we worked on, the prologue that we did uh, development for, and then our main on end title sequence. All that stuff is up there. There's even a 12-minute uh, video of Johnny, our creative director, uh, explaining every single aspect of the technology that we worked on uh, if you want to listen to that stuff there as well. You guys make great work. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Really awesome. appreciate it, man. Cool. Stick around for more from the showroom floor of SIGGRAPH 2018. Thank you very much.